All right, film geeks, today's film review, a good person, Zach Braff's new intergenerational drama. Let's talk about it. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of All Right, Let's Talk About It. My name is Savannah. I am your host. I do film reviews and film industry commentary. Now, if you listen to the episode that came out at noon, then you know I was actually supposed to see this movie, A Good Person, yesterday. But I went to the wrong movie theater, so I ended up seeing The Lost King instead. That was a review that was posted at noon. But I went to an 11.30 a.m. Central Time showing of A Good Person. I just got back, so we're talking about it now while it's still fresh on my mind. I don't think I've done this before. Usually I see a movie Thursday night and then I get up early Friday morning, record it, and try my hardest to get it online live by noon. So this is the first time I'm, you know, fresh out of the theater, right at the microphone, while it's still fresh. I'm not sure how good of an idea this is because this movie rocked my feelings a little bit, um, more than I expected it to. Um, whenever a movie comes out, I, I watch the initial trailer. I try to stay away from everything else, any interviews, commentary, um, or anything like that. And that was proven a mistake for me when the movie Till came out. I've talked about this movie before, but the movie about Emmett Till starring Danielle Deadweiler, uh, before the movie came out, there was a featurette, kind of a behind the scenes, um, commercial that was used as a trailer in front of a movie I watched. And that's where I learned that the director made the decision to not show any violence against black people in the film. And so I already went into the movie expecting kind of a cowardice take. And that's what I got from it because she refused to show what happened. She refused to really go into it authentically. She went into it from a place of fear, not just fear of what happened, but fear of what people would think. She wanted to get Black people into the theater. And the kind of weird message that seems to be very popular right now is no one wants to watch Black trauma movies. So that's the approach she took. And I really wish I hadn't known that before I'd gone into the movie. I I think I would have come at it with a little less bias. So... That being said, I try to stay away from anything else. No interviews, nothing. I don't want to know anything. Just the basic trailer. Whatever I'm going to see at the movie theater. That's all I want to see. So I went into this uh, relatively blind. Kind of, I guess you could say. Because all I saw was the trailer. I knew this was going to be Morgan Freeman, Florence Pugh, uh, Molly Shannon. I knew this was going to be kind of an emotional drama I wasn't expecting to be as affected by it but the way I was I found it to be incredibly relatable um disturbingly so now I'm not on drugs by any stretch of the word so let, let's let's backtrack a little bit so this is a good person directed by Zach Braff yes that Zach Braff uh, the same one stars Morgan Freeman Florence Pugh Molly Shannon uh and it's an incredible cast. Um, Molly Shannon, God, she's been around for a very long time. And Florence Pugh, she has been doing her thing for a couple years now, but I think she's really starting to just spring up. And then Morgan Freeman, who, God, I think he's been around longer than most of us have been born. Um, him getting older is one of the greatest tragedies in America right now, and it makes me really sad to see him older. I mean, he's always been older, as long as I've been watching him, but... He's always been so timeless, and to see that time affects him as well, it makes me re- it makes me a little sad, a little sentimental. And let's just get that out of the way. the The casting for this was incredible. The performances were out of this world. God, I mean, it's Morgan Freeman. He's incredible. He's so good at whatever he does, and he's just, you know, for someone who has such a very there's everything about him is very noticeable, his height, his voice, you know, it's, he's still able to just kind of stretch out and be different people, be different characters. Um, Just, just seeing him, he's such a good actor is what I'm trying to say for someone who has such, what's the word, such trademarks about him, things that we automatically notice that's Morgan Freeman, you know, that voice, that that booming, beautiful voice that everyone wants to narrate their life. I don't know. He just, he always impresses me. He, it just, 
he's just so good at what he does. He's such an incredibly gifted actor. And seeing Florence Pugh really bloom. Now, I have not been on the Florence Pugh train much at all. The first time I saw her in theaters was Black Widow. And then I didn't see her again until Don't Worry Darling. I loved her in Black Widow. I thought she was wonderful. And then Don't Worry Darling was such a weird little movie. It was just very weird. I thought it I really wanted Olivia Wilde to go back into the editing room or do some reshoots and just try again because the potential was definitely there. It just, the execution was just off. However, Florence Pugh's performance in that movie really saved it. She carried that movie. I mean, she was a centerpiece. She's a star and everything really revolved around her, but she carried that thing. She she saved it essentially because without her, I think it would have just been trash. Had they gotten anyone else to play that role, I think it would have been trash. She was probably the smartest decision Olivia Wilde made in that entire process. And now we have a good person. And this movie right here. Okay, so the performances were great. The execution, once again, was just very, very strange. Not strange. I know strange is a good word because... I don't understand how he he missed the way he did. So this was written, produced, and directed by Zach Braff. And he has taken his turn in the director's chair before. He hasn't produced anything that's noteworthy, I don't think. Nothing that I can think off the top of my head. I could be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. But he obviously has a passion for this, and he obviously wants to grow in this area. I, I feel like he had the right idea. He just... The, the subject matter was almost too big for him. Does that make sense? So what is this about? This is about a young lady named Allison, and Allison was in a horrible car accident that killed her future sister-in-law. She was engaged to a man named Nathan, and, her, you know, a horrible car accident where she was the driver. She was actually looking at her phone, looking at the Maps app and for two seconds, and then they were in a horrible car accident. She lost her future sister-in-law and her sister-in-law's husband, um, essentially orphan orphaning their daughter, Ryan, and Morgan Freeman would have been her father-in-law, but there's obviously a clear strained relationship between her fiance and his father. And she spirals. So this accident happens. We flash forward a year and she's in active addiction, addicted to Oxy. Um, is it Oxy? Yeah, sure. It's Oxy, and that was the medication that was given to her for pain, and she just kept at it because uh, Oxy has a ten is basically heroin. It's opiates, so it's legal opiates, I guess you could say. It's legal heroin, and it does great with pain, but it makes people feel very, very numb, especially when you've done you've gone through something so traumatic, and you're dealing with a lot of heavy emotions and dealing with emotions like that. When you're carrying a lot of that weight, it it becomes too much. It becomes a lot, and you want to just chuck it away, but you can't because it's yours, and you have to own it, and you don't want to. So, something like oxy is perfect for that. It's, it's a way to kind of numb and forget that you're carrying so much. And she got addicted and she became a bit of a junkie, cutting off her own hair, which is so symbolic. Um, I don't know. I almost want to ask Zach Braff, like, did you do that on purpose? The cut when she was cutting off all of her hair. I mean, women who just cut off all their hair, they do it for one of two reasons. One, they need to start over from scratch. You know, it's time to restart the hair journey. Or two, for mental health reasons, it's it's very symbolic wanting to cut off all your hair, shedding the weight, so to speak. It's one of the reasons why I actually cut off all my hair. Uh, one, I was broke and I needed to get my hair done right before college, but also I was dealing with a lot mentally and I needed just, it, it was therapeutic, just like cutting some of the weight off. And that's how we meet this one year later version of Allison. She is clearly dealing with a lot. She's reached her lowest point to the, to a point where she is trying to shed off all the weight that that emotional weight and one of the ways a lot of people women especially will do this physically to kind of manifest this physically in some way is to cut off their hair sounds strange but it makes sense at the same time so that's how we meet her she's trying to get rid of the weight she's reached a really low point she's an active addi addiction her mother is very frustrated with it but also enabling her in a way so we're getting all different acts aspects of 
active addiction, just the enabling and the the depression and the mental illness that comes along with it. And then we have Morgan Freeman's character, Daniel, who would have been her father-in-law, and he's 10 years sober. You know, he was a drunk for most of his life, all of his children's lives. And now he's dealing with grief. He's having to raise his teenage granddaughter. He doesn't know what he's doing and he wasn't that great of a father to begin with. So he doesn't have a whole lot of tools in his arsenal. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's trying to help her and help her deal with her own grief and her own pain. And she's acting out, you know, she's fighting, she's, you know, verbally abusing her teachers. She's acting out sexually, you know, just all the normal grief stuff, everything. It's like, almost like Zach Braff had a bunch of check boxes and he checked them all off. Um, he ends up running into Allison at an AA meeting, a uh, support group, and that's where things really talk kind of, that's where our story really start to take off. So it's such a beautiful story. The, the issue really is just the writing. It was kind of contrived. So we start in the beginning where, you know, Allison's happy with her long hair, playing the piano, singing at her engagement party. Her fiance is just smiling at her and everyone's just cheering her on. It was so cheesy and so cheap and just contrived and very obvious. Like, look how happy and perfect and beautiful everything was. And then bam, everything just kind of falls apart and it sucks. And, um, I, ugh, I hate it when they do that. I hate it when we're we're forced to believe in the perfection of the before, and then you know all we have left is the 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 aftermath of the after. So it was very forced in the beginning. I think a lot of the pushing of the emotions were were very forced. He was kind of heavy handed in his direction, and he really didn't need to be. There was enough in this story, and there were enough in the actors that this could have just kind of breathed on his own. But I don't think he has quite that experience yet, that kind of confidence to just let a story breathe on his own. The writing was just too much. There was too much going on. Um, I, I felt like we didn't need as much with the granddaughter. She was kind of pointless. She was just there as an extra, a way to kind of uh, relieve some of Allison's guilt. So at times it was very contrived, very cheeky, very cheesy. And the the story was at times was very chunky. There was too much. And yet for being too much, the story moved very well. But there were moments where it felt like it dragged a little bit, like he had to kind of put something in here instead of just taking some things out. But what saves this movie, because is the performances. I, I think if the casting wasn't so great, this would have fallen apart. It wouldn't have been very good. But I think when you have actors who are just damn good, they can breathe life into anything, you know? You know, breathe into these dry bones kind of deal. You know what I mean? And that's what Florence Pugh did for Dor Don't Worry Darling. And that's what Florence Pugh and Morgan Freeman are doing here. Such an odd opposite kind of casting you have tall as crap black morgan freeman and itty bitty she's so tiny and so precious florence Pugh, and these you know they're divided by in real life i think by at least two generations you know i think he's old enough to be her great grandfather really so these inter intergenerational stories are so beautiful because they can be so healing if you've ever seen like videos of children at a nursing home, it's so healing and it's so beautiful because children are just so compassionate and older people love to be grandparents. There's something about reaching and loving on that younger generation that gives them a sense of vitality and reminds them, okay, this is why I lived all these years. And you kind of see this a little bit here too, where despite the pain that Allison has caused him because she was the driver in that accident and it technically was her fault, she looked at her phone, he feels a sense of purpose and wanting to help her heal. So we, we've got multiple sides of addiction here. We have active addiction, Allison. We have 10 years sober, Morgan Freeman, Daniel. And then we also have a, her sponsor who is kind of, she's necessary obviously to the story and the plot because that's what AA is all about. You know, eventually you do get a sponsor. But she she there wasn't enough of her, I felt like. But I think she was there to kind of show us all these different sides. Active addiction, um, 10 years recovered and then, you know, striving for success kind of deal. But then we get to a point where there is a relapse. So we get to see all of that. 
And there was too much, I think. It was good to see, it was well done, but it was also too much at the same time. But it worked because the casting was so freaking good. These performances were excellent, absolutely excellent. I can't stress that enough. So if you're wondering, like, is it going to be? Good? Yes, yes. Go ahead, buy a ticket. You're going to enjoy it, I think. I don't think you're going to really notice much of the clunkiness of the writing because the performances are just that good. And it's such a beautiful story. In spite of it being so heavy handed at times and a little hand fisted, I was boohoo crying. And I think I was boohoo crying because I related to Allison's character so much. Now, again, I've never been on drugs. I've never been through addiction or anything like that. So I can't relate to that part. But what I can relate to is going through a situation so traumatic that it resets your life. Going through something that is just so catastrophic and so traumatic that it puts you in a reset. It, it literally creates a line in your life of before and after. Getting to a point in, a, in, when, in your adult life where you experience something, I don't know how else to say it, so traumatic that it resets you physically, mentally, and emotionally. Where it's like you don't, you forget how to adult. You forget how you functioned. You forget everything. And it's like you have to figure it all out all over again. And you have to relearn how to be human. You have to relearn how to be you. You forget everything. You forget who you are, what you're good at, what your love of life is. And you're, you're sitting there trying to figure out in the middle of this reset, what is the reason? What is the reason? I know that feeling. I know it intimately. I've been there. I have been through something so traumatic. It reset me. And that had me crying because I could see myself in her. And to me, that's when a film is beautiful. When I can look at a character and I can see pieces of me and it's like, I am not by myself. I am not alone. Those little reminders that you're not the only one. And I think movies like this, while it has its issues, again, the performances are so good. I feel like this is the kind of movie that heals. So I think this is a win for Zach Braff. It's not perfect. He's, it's not perfect. It's his best, though. It's better than what he's done before. And there's nowhere but up for him. There's so much potential in him as a director. I'm willing to overlook all the mess because the potential is so clear. I can't wait to see what he does in the future. Thank you so much for listening to this little mini rant and rave about a good person. You know, cute little Friday bonus episode. So to sum it all up, the writing is the downfall here. It's a little contrived you know, kind of cute, you know, cutesy in some ways, cheeky, kind of cheesy. It, it, it's stuffed at moments and even drags a little bit. But the performances and the casting, uh, Morgan Freeman, Florence Pugh, a nice little assist from Molly Shannon, the performances make it and save it. It makes the film worth it. And it's just, they make this beautiful. They make it so beautiful so highly recommend i mean i understand most of y'all are probably going to end up seeing john wick 4 this weekend but 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 if you're looking to take a little emotional ride highly recommend a good person catch it while you can it is limited release i'm not sure when it's supposed to go wide but for right now it is limited so what is coming up i already have my tickets for dungeons and dragons which i'll be seeing thursday and then a thousand and one i'll be seeing friday and then the week after that, which will be the first week of April, which I think is also Easter weekend, if not, if I'm not mistaken. I, I really should know that as much time as I spend at church. Um, Air is coming out that week. Uh, the new Ben Affleck starring and directing with Matt Damon. Definitely looking forward to that one. I love him as a director. Um, I, he's just very consistent. I did not see Live By Night though. But other than that, he's he's very consistent. And he's very good. So I'm looking forward to that to see his spin on the Air Jordan story with Nike. And then the week after that, I already have my ticket for Beautiful Disaster, um, the Jamie McGuire adaptation starring Dylan Sprouse. 
I'm really looking forward to that one. I can't wait to talk about that one. I'm going to have some things to say. I'm going to have a lot of things to say. That one's going to be for the Book Talk girlies. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. <sighs> so, yep, that's what you've got to look forward to. The summer season is almost here. Oh, I can't wait. So thank you so much for listening, you guys. I hope you have an amazing weekend and I will see you next time. Want to advertise on this podcast? Check the episode description to see how you can be featured on the next episode.